Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Y'all can be seated. So God has, God has blessed us in so many ways. He has given us so many things. He has blessed us in our health. I know he's, he's healed my wife of multiple sclerosis. Um, we've heard Clint talk about how he believes God healed him of the same thing. Um, my daughter was healed of acid reflux. There are multiple times in my life where God has touched me or my family. Um, he's forgiven us. Thank God he forgives us every day, because if not, I would be in some serious trouble. Um, not a day goes by that I don't make some sort of mistake, and I have to say, God, I'm sorry. Touch my attitude. Forgive me for what I just did, or whatever it is. Um, but we have that forgiveness. We have that. We've got that that advocate with the Father, as the Bible says, that we can come before Him and ask that. Um, he saved us from ourselves. He saved us from sin. He's protected us from things that we don't even realize have happened. And he has given all of this to us, as the Bible says, freely. Um, he has endured unfathomable pain. The Bible says that he was beaten. It says, by his stripes we are healed. He was beaten 39 times with a cat of nine tails. To give you kind of an idea of what that is, if you've ever seen a whip or if you've ever, you know, a bull whip, multiply that times nine. And then put little shards of metal and glass on the ends of it. They hit him with that. And what it would do is, is it would reach in and it would grab the skin. And it would rip it in chunks off of him. Yeah. It would wrap around and it would get in his ribs. And it would just tear flesh and muscle. The Bible says that he was beating so badly that he was not even recognizable as a man. He went through, he endured so much, he couldn't even carry his cross up the hill. He sat in the Garden of Gethsemane and took a cup and became sin for this world. And he died on a cross for us. And the Bible says that he gave that to us freely. Broxton, I have a question for you. What does the word free mean to you? Whenever I say free, what do you think of? What does that mean? Well, you don't have to pay for it. Okay? But that, that never really made sense to me. Um, and that's kind of where I started researching. Language has always been something it, that's fascinating to me. It's, it changes. It evolves. It it. it it um, one word can mean one thing a hundred years ago, and then you go, you translate that today, and it means something different. Um, and the Bible says here freely. So I got thinking about that because there are so many scriptures that say offer yourselves a living sacrifice. You know, we have to, we've got to be devoted to God. We have to give something. We have to give of ourselves. So that scripture never really made a whole lot of sense to me. Well, the scripture itself didn't. And I'd heard it preached that, you know, God gives away these things for free. Uh, what, there's just a spout, and we just go and just take what we want, and it's like, all right, God, I'm good, thanks. I appreciate that. You gave that to me. It's not really what freely means in that scripture. See, free does have two meanings. The first one is without cost. I give you, I give you a free dessert, right? I give you a free car. I give you $100 for free, right? But it has another meaning, and it means without restrictions. So the water flows free. Okay, we are a free people. We are not restricted. We are not bound. Amen. So when the Bible says freely ye have give, free freely have received, freely given, it's not talking about us receiving something at no cost because it does cost us. Okay. It's, the Bible says in Luke 12 and 48, said, But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. 
we have been given something that has been paid a great price for. We go through our lives thinking that it's just free without cost to us, but that's not really the case. It is given to us without restriction. It is given to us freely in the fact that we can take it when we want it. But it does not mean that it does not cost us something. Okay. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. See, before we talked about how God came down and he died and he just, he endured this unfathomable, this, this ridiculous amount of pain. He became sin. The thing that he abhors, the thing that he hates, he drank it in his body. It was so stressful for him, the Bible says that he sweated blood. That's actually a thing. You can be under so much stress that the capillaries at, near the skin start to burst and bleed, you bleed through your pores. Okay? Um, so he was under that much stress. He even, he even prayed. He's like, if this, can, can, we, can we just not do this? Like, can this, can this cup just like, you know, go away? I don't want this. God's flesh did not want that. Okay? His spirit didn't want it. But yet he made that sacrifice, and he said, you know what? Not my will, not my flesh, but thy will. And he let, the sp he let his spirit, the, the God side of him, determine that. Um, so, and we are expected to give back. We are expected to give our bodies as a living sacrifice. What exactly does that look like? Um, we are to be devoted to God. We are to have relationship with him. We talk a lot about relationship in this church. And that relationship isn't always going to look the same for everybody. I've heard Jared get up here and preach, and he says, you know, um, he likes to quote the scripture, you know, seek thine own salvation with much fear and trembling. My relationship with God isn't going to look the same as Luke's. There may be some differences. Maybe he's a morning person. He gets up in the morning and he prays at six o'clock in the morning. For me, six o'clock in the morning doesn't really exist, <laughs> um, especially since I probably hadn't gone to bed till one or two. Um, so that's a little bit more difficult to, for me. I'm not going to get anything accomplished at that point in time. So I pray later in the day, um, and that's okay because Luke is one person and I'm another. And God does not deal with us in the exact same way. He has given us a guideline. He's given us his Bible as a guideline. But it's not just like Jared preached about a week or two, two a couple weeks ago, that it's not just a set of rules for us to follow. It's a guideline for us to live our lives by. Okay. Um, side notes. I'll get back to this. So Acts 10 and 34 says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Let's get some background on this. So <clears throat> before this, God had visited Cornelius, who was a centurion. Okay? He was a Roman soldier. He was not Jewish. He was not Hebrew in any way whatsoever. He was, con he was considered a Gentile. Well, at that point in time, it was, the Jews didn't, they didn't have anything to do with the Gentiles. You know, they were, they were, they just, they didn't. They were just like, okay, you're Gentiles, you, we're not going to have anything to do with you. But God came to Cornelius and said, he said, I want you to send for Peter. Okay, he's staying at such and such house, so and so's house. Send for him. You send your guys to go get him. He said, you've been praying. You've been giving your alms. You've respected me. He said, go get him and do what he says. Listen to his words. Well, God's not stupid. He knows that Peter's not going to just accept these people. So he sends him a vision. And in that vision, there is a, I, I picture it like as a blanket, but it comes down. And on this blanket, there's all these, all this food, all these animals. And God tells him, he says, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And it was all the things that they weren't supposed to eat. They had a certain diet. And, of course, Peter, like everybody else, is like, hey, are you sure about that, God? Because I can't do that. I've never eaten anything that's unclean or common. I can't do that. Of course, this is 
God tell him to do it, and he's arguing with him because we've never done that before, I know. But um, So God tells him, he says, look, Peter, if I've, called it un- if I've cleansed it, you don't call it unclean. Don't call anything that I have cleansed unclean. He did that three times to Peter. Okay, and while Peter's sitting there thinking on this, and I don't know if y'all have ever had this situation where God reveals something to you or you hear a message preached and you're like, this has absolutely nothing to do with me until it actually has something to do with you. Um, that's kind of what Peter was going through. He had no clue what it meant. And then all of a sudden these three guys, two servants and a soldier, show up at, the other guy's name was Simon as well, but Simon the Tanner's house and ask for Peter. So that's what God was telling him. I've cleansed it. I'm not a respecter of persons. And then Peter says, God's not a respecter of persons. We have been given something so freely. It has been given to us without restriction. God didn't care where we came from. He didn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't care. Okay. He gives it to us without restriction, regardless of our backgrounds, regardless of who we are, regardless of how little we think we are, okay? Regardless of how big we think we are, or actually are, it doesn't. And our jobs are freely have received, freely give. Without prejudice, without being a respecter of persons, without looking at this person and going, well, you know what, they've got it all together, they are dressed nicely, and we're naturally drawn to that kind of people. That's just human nature. You know, we're drawn to the better, the, the nicer looking people. But just as much as those people need Jesus, those people that are addicted to drugs and are thieves and murderers and rapists and just the worst kind of people in the world, they are freely given as well. So we need to receive what God has given us. We need to devote our lives to him. Um, we need to devote our lives to God in a manner that is holy and acceptable and reasonable. It's not, it's not unreasonable for that. And then we need to turn around and the things that we have been given, we need to freely give to the next person in line. We need to say, you know, I don't have, silver and gold have my number, but such as I have, give out the rise and walk. Okay. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? We see an Ethiopian that's reading and doesn't understand what they're, what they're reading. We walk up to them and say, hey, do you, do you understand that? Do you get it? They say, no. Okay, well, here's, here's the truth. This is what this means. This is what God did for you. This is what God did for me. And he can do it for you.